Hey my friends, this is a late boy scout taking a little break at a beautiful canyon park, enjoying some views and some fresh air, and I thought I'd take some time today to introduce you to and give you a little first look at the Kershaw injection folders. I've got the 3.0 and the 3.5 here. These are two knives that I've been pretty interested in. Since I first saw Kershaw's product photography for them, I thought you might be interested in them too. These are, it's not going to be a formal review, it really is kind of an overview and first look. But stick around, I'm going to try to help you decide if one of these folding knives is for you. The injection folders are a collaborative design between Kershaw and custom knife maker Todd Rexford. And we can see his name right there on the blade. We'll go ahead and show that to you. Rexford Design. This is the 3.5, the Injection 3.5, model number 3830. And then we'll give you a look at the 3.0, model number 3820. Both of them bear Rexford's name, so that's pretty cool. They are Chinese made, 8CR13 MOV. Exact same blade shape, just different sized. You can see that pretty clearly right there. 3.0 and 3.5 obviously are indicators of the blade length. 3.0 being 3 inches, 3.5 being 3 and a half. Uh, we can talk about the weight before we move on to the blade shape. The weight on these is somewhat analogous at 4.4 and 3.4. So decide which one you are happy carrying, you know, as far as weight is concerned. 4.4 is heavy for some folks. 3.4 for that size, for a 3 inch blade, is also kind of heavy. We don't have any sort of milled out liners on this. I'll try to show that to you. It's just a slab of steel in there. So we didn't really create any weight saving um, features here. It would have been at least nice to have these cutouts here in the G10, at least have those cut through the steel. That would have been pretty cool. We have that on the G10 Hawk by Kershaw. Um, I think they probably could have pulled that off on this design as well. Not sure why they didn't, but they kind of opted not to. Now let's move on to the blade shape. We've got a nice drop point flat ground blade, full flat ground, all the way from the spine down. Really nice little curvature in there in that grind. Just a beautiful blade shape. Great utility from it, a nice piercing point on it. Good looking belly. Great length, great shape, I think, especially in the 3.0. 3.5, if you prefer the larger size is also going to be great for you. The thumb stud is kind of interesting. It's got some detail to it. You can see that there's a little bit of texturing, a little bit of not quite jimping, I wouldn't call it, but I'm not sure what you'd call that sort of grinding out that they did on that. Give your thumb a little more purchase on the actual stud. And it's not tapered at all until you reach sort of this tip here, and then it kind of tapers up like that, almost to like a glass breaker type of shape. Not quite though. Anyway, it's a nice looking thumb stud and I find it to be very functional. As I mentioned before, this is an overview because I have not carried either of these knives, have not used either of these knives. In fact, I probably won't keep both of them. So head over to my Facebook page and see if one or both of them are for sale. I'll probably give you a really sweet deal on them. No jimping at all. I don't remember if I mentioned that. No texturing up here. It's just perfectly smooth. None, none down here either, right there on the uh, liner lock. It's just perfectly smooth. No texturing anywhere really on the knife. It's nice and smooth all over that handle. The G10 has pretty much just been flattened out, made nice and smooth, except for those grooves, of course. Same deal on both sides. Pocket clip is reversible, tip down only, but reversible to both sides, so lefties rejoice. We've got an interesting spacer here. This is one detail that I was kind of, um, not shocked by, by, but sort of taken back that they would do this sort of a spacer thing going on here. Typically you see their spacers being flush with the, uh, both the liners and the handle or the, you know, scales in this case. But they actually had that sort of recessed and rounded. It's, it is a kind of a molded, um, probably an FRN material in there. And you see that it's, on, in neither case, is it really flush with those liners. But that's completely intentional. I think that might have to do with the fact that this pillar back here, this structural pillar, is actually how you get your lanyard through this. So there's no lanyard hole going through the knife this way. That is where your lanyard goes through. You feed it through there and pull it out there, and that's how you make your lanyard for this knife if you want one. 
So pretty cool, pretty interesting design all around. Um, I'd say it's pretty ergonomic as well. That's the full size one once again. And it fills my hand pretty well. You can get, see that I'm gonna get a nice four finger grip on that knife. Nice full handed grip. Feels nice in hand, feels really nice in hand. I really like this little finger guard that they built into this. Rexford, you did a great job with that. I like the look of that. Uh, overall, it's just a really gorgeous, really attractive knife. And this is, this is one of the reasons why when I first saw those product photos, I was like, man, I gotta get my hands on some of those Kershaw ejections, injections as soon as they come out. And uh, yeah, I think they're very, very cool. Really nice looking. Another interesting thing I wanna point out is the pivot screw, which looks to be some sort of proprietary uh, Microtech type pivot screw, but it's not. If you look even closer, you see that that is a Torx screw a uh, torque screw in there. You can easily get your torque bit into there and, and uh, take that thing apart. No different than this one, just a different size, I think. Talk a little bit about the width of the knife. In pocket, it's gonna be somewhat wide. We can see, obviously, that the 3.0 is going to be less so than the 3.5 by a little bit. We'll compare that to a couple of knives that I've got in pocket today. Here's the Kershaw Shuffle. Comparing that to, why don't we go ahead and compare that to the 3, since it's more likely to be competitor to the 3. The shuffle definitely is thinner in pocket, also with that deep carry pocket clip. So very nice. You know, this is probably adequate thinness for just about anybody's use, but not the ultimate in thinness. We'll compare it to one more. I've also got the Spyderco Sage carbon fiber today which also comes in a good bit thinner than that Injection 3.0. Okay, those are good things to know, good things to realize about your knife. How's it gonna fit in your pocket? Also, how it's gonna bury in your pocket with that pocket clip. You're gonna have about roughly that much of the knife sticking out. All right, and if you decide to put a lanyard on there, obviously it'll help with extraction from your pocket. One way or another, I think this is gonna be a pretty nice everyday carry, that's the 3.0. The 3.5, if you do enjoy the EDC Plus size, then the 3.5 is also gonna be great for you. Again, 4.4 ounces for this one. These knives are both priced pretty well, maybe a little high for Kershaw Chinese made knives, but I think that the excellent design you get with them accounts for that. Todd Rexford Design, again, a custom knife maker collaborating with Kershaw on these injection folders. Both very cool. That's a first look at them. I'm Blade Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you later.